quote Bob Lazar, Science has been wrong since there have been scientists. Bob Lazar has seen Area 51 from the inside. Now the UFO leaker reveals one last secret. Aliens have never left the planet. If you believe Lazar, NASA and the Pentagon have known about extraterrestrial technologies and civilizations for a long time, but the knowledge has been kept from us. In the 1980s, Lazar worked in a top secret test facility where he built flying saucers. According to him, the key to space-time travel is a mysterious element 115. Once we have found it and harnessed it, the path to outer space will be wide open for us too. Engineer and scientist Bob Lazar claims to have been involved in a secret UFO workshop in the 1980s. Lazar's extraordinary claims include inside knowledge of secret facilities such as Area 51 and a scientific test site called S4. Lazar's publications have aroused the curiosity of millions and, of course, skepticism. Especially within the recognized scientific community, his work has been heavily criticized. Lazar's tales of advanced technologies and propulsion systems that far exceed the known laws of physics and his claims about hitherto largely unknown Element 115 go beyond the scope of what our natural science considers possible. Accepted science tends to vehemently reject fantastic claims such as Lazar's without tangible evidence and reproducible results. But Lazar is right when he says that science has been wrong ever since it has existed, and now it may be wrong again. There are spaceships everywhere in the universe. Quote, I have absolutely no doubt that an alien spaceship exists outside this solar system. It sounds like something out of a science fiction thriller. Bob Lazar claims to have worked with extraterrestrial technologies in secret workshops for years. His workplace was the super secret facility with the simple name S4, which is said to be very close to the legendary Area 51. Lazar claims to have seen nine different types of extraterrestrial spaceships there, all with unique designs and capabilities. Technologically, the UFOs are nothing like anything we know on Earth. They have no classic combustion engines and are made of materials that are largely unknown on Earth. Lazar calls the typical disc-shaped UFO that dozens of people observe on this Earth every year as the sports model. These discs are described by most witnesses as silver and brightly lit. They rotate and coined the term flying saucer back in the 1950s. Lazar's investigations included precisely these exciting details, namely finding out how the parts were able to fly without any fuel or recognizable propulsion. What he discovered was outrageous. A central element of Lazar's statements is the description of element 115, which was still unknown on Earth at the time. This substance is capable of generating an anti-gravitational field. In a clear test, this means overcoming the laws of gravity and thus breaking with the central element of Newtonian physics. This technology, once fully understood and replicated by us humans, could not only revolutionize space travel, but also change our entire understanding of physics and energy forever. In the course of his work, Lazar theorized the technologies that power these spaceships. He realized that faster-than-light travel or the manipulation of space-time are no problem at all for beings who master these technologies. Presumably, members of these civilizations overcome long distances in their flying saucers with the help of technologies that we have not yet cracked. Anti-gravity and space-time curvatures are, in essence, the solution to what we know from science fiction as the warp drive. During Lazar's active time, however, it was allegedly not possible to make UFOs fly and to actually copy technologies. But if we believe other witnesses, the U.S. military is still working on it today. Why is the government hiding it? Quote, It is ridiculous that the government continues to withhold information that could change the world's social, technological, and economic future. In his books and speeches, the UFO leaker has repeatedly and enthusiastically pointed out that it is incomprehensible that the U.S. government and other governments around the world are withholding their knowledge about UFOs and extraterrestrial technologies. Imagine how our world would change if we knew that our ideas about physics are only part of the truth. 
Researchers who today rack their brains over formulas or laboriously try to find ways to make space travel more and more difficult might have access to new technologies and materials. It's not just science and space travel that could benefit. We are polluting our planet with the residues of combustion engines and the industry is probably also operating at Stone Age levels compared to alien technologies. Why on earth are politicians withholding knowledge and pretending that there are no UFOs, these technologies, or aliens? There was an exciting answer to this question in the summer of 2023 when military leaker David Grouch forced a hearing before the US Congress. Grouch himself was an investigator in a military UFO investigation unit for many years. He was supposed to investigate UFO sightings across the country, but then Grouch found out that his job was just a fake. A secret military unit was working behind him, making crashed UFOs and all evidence connected with the findings disappear before the official investigators arrived. Colleagues are said to have told Grouch behind closed doors that the military has possessed UFO technology since the Roswell crash in 1947, collecting it in order to reverse engineer it and get a hold of the new technology. This corresponds exactly to what Bob Lazar already claimed. In the context of the hearing, it was repeatedly said that the government does not share the knowledge because the military wants to secure the technologies before anyone else and thus expand the military superiority of the USA. So it's not about progress from the world, but about power and secret machinations. It seems as if there are two worlds on this earth, what we are officially led to believe and what is real. Lazar himself built UFOs. Quote, Working on alien spaceships, understanding them, and trying to replicate their technology was the most exciting and terrifying experience of my life. It sounds exciting and terrifying at the same time, as Bob Lazar describes his work at the S4 Research Center. Working between these two worlds took its toll on the man, and he often doubted what was real and what was not. The opportunity to study and decipher technologies far beyond current human understanding provided a unique opportunity to push the boundaries of science. According to Lazar, his work included trying to understand the workings of the propulsion systems of the spacecraft. A key point was the propulsion system made possible by Element 115. Lazar was fascinated to be part of such a secret and groundbreaking project, but at the same time, what he saw and did on a daily basis also frightened him. The possible consequences of these technologies, both the good and the potential risks, often push the scientist to his emotional limits. Quote, I'm not a UFO fanatic. I was never interested in UFOs before I worked there at S4. Bob Lazar describes himself as a young enthusiast who had never heard or known anything about real UFOs before starting work. He also knew nothing more than that there were people who claimed to have seen flying saucers or what they had been reported in the media about the Roswell crash. In the beginning, Lazar's scientific ambition and career came first. It was only over time that he began to have doubts and realize the explosive nature of his work. After leaving S4, Lazar attended ufologist conventions and spoke with other dropouts. The Truth About Element 115 Element 115, the stable element, is what is used, and yes, it does create a gravitational field. Now you're probably wondering what the mysterious element 115 actually is and where it comes from. Lazar describes element 115 as Moscovium, as the stable element that the power source and centerpiece of the propulsion systems of all currently known alien spacecraft. According to Lazar, these propulsion systems used Element 115 to create a strong gravitational field that allowed the spaceships to distort space around them, allowing them to travel enormous distances almost instantaneously. This technology, he claims, would operate on a completely different level to anything known or understood by human science to date. In the 21st century, scientists are already working feverishly on implementation of the warp drive, which, as Lazar describes, works by distorting space-time. Distances are not traveled through the three-dimensional space that we see, but via space-time folds and, in principle, via dimensions below or above. 
However, our scientists have so far failed to answer the question of how we can generate the energy for this space-time distortion. This is where we come up against the limits of Newtonian physics and Einstein's relativity equations. According to these physical models, the energy requirement would go to infinity. The idea that a stable, heavy element such as element 115 can cause such fundamental physical effects provokes many scientists. However, a few years ago, proof of the existence of the mysterious element was provided. Scientists succeeded in producing Moscovium synthetically for the first time in 2003. However, it was extremely unstable and disintegrated in milliseconds. Apparently, the extraterrestrials have another trick up their sleeve that we do not yet understand. Bob Lazar, Bob and Ingo Swan I only saw what I saw, I've only done what I've done. Bob Lazar is not the only one who claims to have knowledge of UFO technologies and extraterrestrials. U.S. scientist Bob Dean served with NATO for six years and claims to have discovered that the U.S. government and military are aware of nine extraterrestrial species. Three more species are said to have been added later. Bob Dean claims that these beings are active on Earth itself, in its environment such as on the Moon and throughout the solar system. Some of them are similar to us, others exist in completely different dimensions and are either not visible to us at all or only partially visible. Another impressive witness to very real alien activity in our solar system was the American medium Ingo Swan. The clairvoyant worked intensively with scientists and the military on various projects in the 1960s and 70s. Swan was a specialist in remote viewing, a technique in which extraordinarily gifted people direct their spiritual gaze to distant places. Swan scanned Jupiter in this way long before a probe reached the planet for the first time, and later he is said to have seen aliens on the moon as part of a secret project. These beings were apparently mining there and became aggressive when they sensed Swan's spiritual presence. Technology to Study Stars Humans have been studying the stars for thousands of years, but it was not until 1609 that Galileo Galilei first used a telescope to glimpse the stars, making him the first man to do so. Over the years, the technology behind telescopes has evolved to let us view images up to 400 times their normal size. Modern telescopes can give us insights into events that occur in the most remote parts of the universe, when stars form, when they die and even when extraterrestrial objects cross into our solar system. The Panoramic Survey Telescope and Rapid Response System, or PANSTARS-1, is a collection of astronomical cameras, telescopes, and a computing facility that continuously scans the sky for moving or variable objects while also producing precise astronomy and photometry of objects that have already been found. It is housed at the Haileakala Observatory in Hawaii, United States. The second PAN-STARRS data release was announced in January 2019. It is the greatest collection of astronomical data ever disclosed, weighing in at 1.6 petabytes. Under the management of the University of Hawaii, the PAN-STARRS went online on the 6th of December 2008, but didn't begin full-time science observations until the 13th of May 2010. This powerful telescope was used to detect the first interstellar object passing through our solar system. Aumuamua An interstellar object is an astronomical object in interstellar space that is not gravitationally connected to a star, but the term can also refer to an object that is traveling through space but is momentarily passing by a star, like some asteroids and comets. On the 19th of October, 2017, astronomer and physicist Robert Work was observing the stars using the Pan-STARRS telescope in Hawaii. He detected an object passing through our solar system. The object was 21 million miles from Earth when Work observed it. That distance is like traveling to the moon 85 times. The object was named Oumuamua. It is red, but rather small for a space object at about 3,000 feet long and 548 feet thick. The name Oumuamua is Hawaiian and roughly translates to first distant messenger. The object showed strange characteristics as it moved close to the sun. Normally, when viewed on a telescope, objects that pass close to the sun, like comets, appear fuzzy. This is because a nebulous envelope forms around the nucleus of the comet. This envelope is called a comma, 
Unlike regular comets, Oumuamua didn't have any comma. The object was also observed to be moving in a tumbling motion instead of a more traditional spinning motion of comets. It moves at a speed fast enough to escape the gravitational pull of the Sun. This means that Oumuamua came from a different solar system and it would eventually leave our own. But its original planetary system is not known. Most scientists believe that Oumuamua is a natural object, but a few others believe that it is a product of alien technology, perhaps a drone sent to explore our solar system. Avi Loeb's Theory Avi Loeb is a physicist and professor at Harvard University. He is known for pushing the claim that alien life exists and Oumuamua could be proof. To explain Oumuamua's non-gravitational acceleration, Loeb and his postdoctoral student Shmuley Bailey published an article on October 26, 2018. In this article, they examined the idea that the object might be an artificial thin solar sail driven by solar radiation pressure. Solar sails are a method of spacecraft propulsion using radiation pressure exerted by sunlight on large mirrors. Other researchers have claimed that the evidence is insufficient to support such a claim and that a solar sail in motion cannot accelerate. In response, Loeb published an essay describing six abnormal characteristics of Oumuamua that set it apart from other comets and asteroids. Loeb and Harvard undergrad Amir Shiraj proposed a search for particles like Oumuamua that may have become trapped in the solar system after losing orbital energy during a near encounter with Jupiter on November 27, 2018. The scientists noted that more interstellar objects could be discovered by future sky surveys, such as those using the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope. Loeb published a book titled Extraterrestrials, The First Sign of Intelligent Life Beyond Earth. In his book, he describes the 2017 detection of Oumuamua. Project Lyra there have been talks to send a spacecraft to Oumuamua to discover what the interstellar object is. Project Lyra is a feasibility study launched by the Initiative for Interstellar Study I for IS, to determine if a journey to Oumuamua is feasible and how to go about it. The goal of the mission is not just to figure out how to get to Oumuamua, but must get to it in a reasonable time, at a close enough distance to Earth, and still be able to get useful scientific information. Researchers suggested in January 2022 that a spacecraft launch from Earth could catch up to Oumuamua in 26 years. A problem could be that our spacecraft will eventually overtake Oumuamua, so scientists must figure out ways to decelerate the spacecraft when it gets close to its target. Scientists believe that the mission would be challenging, but it would be both feasible and scientifically attractive. Past Civilizations Buried in Antarctica Oumuamua passed through our solar system, but is there proof of alien technology landing on Earth? There are claims that Antarctica was once ice-free and that an ancient civilization is buried under the ice in Antarctica. Could they hold secrets to alien life? The ancient Piri Reis map was created in 1513 using military intelligence. It is thought to have verified the existence of Antarctica's hidden city. Even though the map appears to depict the Antarctic coast hundreds of years before it was found, many academics at the time rejected it. But recent images from NASA seem to show signs of a human settlement below the ice. Online investigators speculate that these images depict a city. The images were captured using remote sensing photography for NASA's Operation Icebridge expedition to Antarctica. Google Earth photographs also appear to show a pyramid sticking out of the tundra, with supporters suggesting it is proof that people formerly lived in the region and created buildings. Conspiracies sprang out of the wake of these images. Some claim that Hitler was aware of the city in Antarctica and claimed it as German territory. The Nazis built a base there and discovered alien technology buried under the ice. Others claim they contacted aliens and got information on how to build superweapons. Some people believe that the rumored base is still present and that the Illuminati, Germans, and aliens are conspiring to establish a new world order from it. Pentagon UFO Videos with theories spreading of alien tech and a Nazi base in the Arctic region, believers in the extraterrestrial would be glad to learn that the Pentagon released videos that confirm the existence of UFOs. In 2020, the Pentagon officially released a few videos captured by Navy SEALs. These videos show unidentified flying objects that some people believe to be alien technology. The videos released were captured in 2004, 2014, 2015, and 2019. Tic Tac Fighter pilot Commander David Fravor 
of the USS Nimitz Carrier Strike Group claims to have investigated radar readings of a potential target off the Southern California coast on November 14, 2004. According to Fravor, the strike group's USS Princeton CG-59 ship had been monitoring strange aircraft for two weeks before the incident. The plane would arrive at an altitude of 80,000 feet, 24,000 meters, then quickly descend toward the water before coming to a stop and hovering around 20,000 feet. Fravor claimed to have observed a white oval object floating over an occlusion in the water. He calculated the length of the object to be around 40 feet. There were four persons in total, two pilots and two weapons systems officers in the back seats of the two planes who saw the object. According to Fravor and another pilot, Alex Dietrich, they saw the object for roughly five minutes. Fravor claims that as he descended to get closer to the object, it rose and followed his plane's track upward until it vanished. A second wave of fighters, led by Lieutenant Commander Chad Underwood, took over the investigation. Underwood's aircraft had a cutting-edge infrared camera, Flare, which Fravor's craft did not have. Underwood captured the FLIR video and named the infrared image Tic Tac, but did not personally observe any odd objects. Gimbal and Go Fast Fighter pilots from the USS Theodore Roosevelt Carrier Strike Group were flying off the east coast of the United States between 2014 and 2015. They reported instrument detections of unidentified aircraft objects. During this time, they filmed the Gimbal and Go Fast videos at the time. The New York Times published two videos named Flair and Gimbal when they reported on the incidents on December 16, 2017. UFO investigators raised their speculations, but the story reported by the New York Times wasn't accepted by everyone. Journalism professor Keith Clore spoke of the story calling it a curious narrative that appears to be driven by thinly sourced and slanted reporting. Clore added, Cursory attention has been given to the most likely prosaic explanations. Instead, the coverage has, for the most part, taken a quizzical, mysterious frame that plays off a catchy UFO tag in the headline. Another similar video was made available to the public in 2019, but it wasn't until April 2021 that the Pentagon verified it. Pentagon spokesperson Sue Go confirmed that the video was captured by Navy personnel aboard USS Russell. The video shows what appears to be an unidentified triangular object in the sky. But are these actually UFOs? Potential Explanation the Department of Defense classified these videos as unidentified, but the claims still exist that they show proof of extraterrestrial life. However, not every member of the public believes that they are sufficient to prove the existence of alien life. Writer Matthew Galt spoke on the UFO theory saying that the events reflect the same pattern that has played out dozens of times before. Someone sees something strange in the sky, and the public jumps into an illogical conclusion. Skeptics believe that the instruments on the plane must have malfunctioned or the objects look strange to us because of human observational illusion, like parallax, where our viewpoint makes us see objects quite different from how they truly are. Zimbabwe School Sighting UFO sightings do not occur only in the United States. At around 10 a.m. on September 16, 1994, 62 pupils from the Ariel School Zimbabwe claimed to have seen a silver craft and aliens. At the time of the sighting, the children were aged between 6 and 12. According to them, while their teachers were having a meeting, the aircraft descended on a field near the school. One or more creatures emerged and spoke to the children telepathically. Their message was about the preservation of the environment. The incident lasted about 15 minutes. Strangely, two days before this event, there were multiple accounts of UFO sightings in Southern Africa. The pupils had reported the sightings to their teachers who waved it off, but the next day, they had informed their parents who came to the school to discuss the incident with the teachers. Tim Leach, the BBC's Zimbabwe reporter, paid a visit to the school on September 19th to record interviews with students and staff. Leach stated, I could manage war zones, but I could not handle this. Author Cynthia Hyde learned about the sighting via a report of it on ZBC Radio. She visited the school on September 20th, 1994. She spoke with a few of the children and asked them to sketch what they had witnessed. She claimed that all the kids had told her the same tale. Australian School Sighting the sighting in an Australian school happened at about 11 a.m. on the 6th of April, 1966. Students and one teacher from the Westall High School saw a flying object. They described the object as gray or silver green and saucer shaped. The craft flew over the school and disappeared behind some trees only to re-emerge 20 minutes later, this time pursued by five other aircraft. Author Keith Basterfield claimed that what the school had seen was a balloon blown off course from the Highball High Altitude Balloon Project. The balloons were used to monitor radiation levels after British nuclear tests at Maralinga. Fifty years later in 2016, live interviews were carried out with the witnesses of the event. 
Operation Prato. In 1977, there were numerous UFO sightings reported in Colares, Brazil. Residents of the area claimed that they had developed scars on their bodies. They claimed that the scars were caused by lights in the sky. In response to this, the Brazilian Air Force launched Operation Saucer, or Operation Preto in Portuguese. The operation was commanded by Captain Irangue Bolivar Soares Negara de Holland Lima. It went on until 1978, but was closed when they found no evidence of unusual activity. Captain Irangue talked about his experiences living with his men in an interview he gave to ufologist Admir Jose Gavard and Marco Antonio Petit in 1997. 20 years after the operation. He was discovered dead in his house three months after the interview. He had seemingly hung himself using the belt of his bathrobe. His death sparked the curiosity of conspiracy theorists. According to ufologist Jacques Vallée, some people were killed by the lights that the UFO shot at them, and injuries were compatible with microwave radiation effects. Other ufologists claim that 400 people's blood was drawn by the lights from UFOs. Most people associate Russia with icy winters, vodka, and the thirst men in space. The country is characterized by distant regions and vast landscapes like the tundra. Few people think of Russia when they think of unbelievable and scary events. However, there are more myths, legends, and extraordinary incidents in the country than many think. These stories show that shocking discoveries have been made in very lonely and remote places. A Mummified Creature in 2016, an eerie event occurred in Siberia. Miners discovered a strange creature in an old mine. Quite unexpectedly, this mysterious find happened. Excavation work was taking place in the small town of Udachny. While searching for diamonds, the small creature was discovered. It was already mummified and seemed to have died a very long time ago. The workers in the area had never seen such an animal before. Everyone demanded quick answers and an investigation. Some people thought a new dinosaur species might have been discovered because the rocks in the mine date back to the Mesozoic era. Others thought the case was less spectacular. The assumption is that it's more likely the mummy of a small predator, such as a wolverine. What kind of animal the peculiar shape is has not yet been clarified. The creature from the diamond mine remains an extremely creepy sight to this day. Ancient Buildings in the Caucasus in the Caucasus, there are countless buildings of unknown origin. There are hundreds of buildings that have become known as dolmens. Researchers date them up to be 25,000 years old. Their prehistoric architecture is astonishing. At first glance, almost all the objects look quite simple, but they were built in a very precise and structured way. The rocks were formed and bent at an angle of 90 degrees. During the creation, it was carefully made to look so that all corners fit and a circle of buildings could be formed. Nobody knows why these buildings were erected and for what purpose they served. To this day, they have been little explored, and some have already been destroyed or are in danger of crumbling in the near future. The fascinating dolmens in the Caucasus are the perfect example of the fact that Stone Age people had greater knowledge about craftsmanship than previously assumed. Craters in the Tundra The Tundra stretches across endless expanses and barren landscapes. Except for lakes, grasses, and mosses, this environment is a very lonely place. Only a few species live in the harsh conditions of this region. It was all the more astonishing that the Russian Tundra, of all places, became the scene of shocking phenomena. Deep craters were sighted on the Yamal Peninsula. First there were three, then even seven could be counted. All of them are very similar. Imposing and impressive, the holes are spread over long distances. They have a depth of up to 70 meters and a width of about 60 meters. Almost every crater is filled with water and resembles a round hole. Scientists are themselves faced with a mystery, which could have many origins. They assume that the craters could have possibly sprung from a gas and a resulting eruption. A definite solution has not yet been provided. UFO Debris from Volgograd Volgograd is a huge city and is considered one of the most important industrial areas in Russia. The place gained a lot of notoriety during the Second World War. Many people don't know that strange stone slabs caused a stir in the region in 2015. Self-proclaimed UFO hunters made a discovery during a research that immediately caused a stir. More than a dozen small stone labs and one much larger one were recovered. 
the participants of the expedition were all immediately of the opinion that the large stone slab must be an extraterrestrial drone or the remains of a flying object. It was great excitement to see if real evidence of an alien civilization could finally be discovered. Some among the finders were of the opinion that the found objects had been lingering on Earth for millions of years. In addition, a rare material was suspected, which is used in space research. The disks are to be examined soon for more detailed answers. The Mysterious City of Archim In the Urals, there is a site that magically attracts people from all over the world. It's called Archim and is located on the border with Kazakhstan. This site, which was discovered in 1987, is said to be ancient and a reminder of the Bronze Age. Evidence could date the origin of the city to around 2000 BC. Above all, the unique structure keeps archaeologists busy and reveals new insights into ancient building. Thirty houses are arranged in two rings around a circle. The perfect construction reveals considerable knowledge of mathematics and astronomy. Which cultural group of that time created this site and what life was like for the inhabitants is still largely unclear, but there is something about the place that no one can explain. Pilgrims, shamans, and tourists are attracted to the mysterious city and sense a cosmic energy. A 250 million year old microchip. In the south of Russia lies the city of Labinsk. Until now, the place was only known to locals. This changed with an exciting discovery. Fishermen found a stone by a river in the summer of 2014. This had a strange object enclosed in it. It was very striking and reminded them of a small plate. The men hoped for an answer and sent the stone to an institute where researchers were to solve the mystery. A forensic team was able to determine that the rock was up to 250 million years old. But what made this story so incredible was the actual find. The small plate was identified as a kind of microchip. However, it could not be removed because it was feared that the chip would be destroyed in the process. The origin is uncertain. Ufologists feel that this find confirms that it's a foreign body developed by an extraterrestrial technology that found its way to Earth millions of years ago. The Stone UFO of Siberia Almost always, the best stories about UFOs come from the USA. But in Russia, incredible discoveries have also been made that are more exciting than any Hollywood film. Far away in Siberia, miners found a strange object. At the time, they were digging at a depth of 41 meters. In fact, two of these objects were found. Only one remained undamaged. It was a little over a meter wide and weighed a proud 220 kilograms. The appearance strongly resembled a UFO, and the material consisted entirely of rock. Renowned archaeologists were commissioned to examine the find more closely. Neither clues nor inscriptions could be found. Numerous theories are circulating around the flying saucer made of stone. Could a distant civilization possibly have buried the objects deep underground thousands of years ago? These and many unanswered questions were in the air. An answer could never be found. The Dead at the Dyatlov Pass In 1959, a horrific accident occurred in the former Soviet Union that still raises many questions today. North in the Ural Mountains, a group of nine tourists set out on an unforgettable expedition. Their guide was the experienced student and hiker Igor Dyatlov, after whom the pass was later named. The young people were all aged between 21 and 38. The last known sign of life was from January 28, 1959. What exactly happened after that is a mystery. It was a terrifying moment when a rescue team later reached the camp. The tent had been destroyed and the bodies of the young people were discovered some distance away. They were almost naked or dressed only in their underwear. It seemed as if they had suddenly fled out of fear. In the icy cold, they quickly met their death. High levels of radiation could be found in the remains of their clothing and some of the dead had graying hair. Another hiking group saw red fireballs in the distance over the mountain on the night the drama happened. An official cause of death could not be found, even decades later. The Creature Next to the Nuclear Power Plant A ghostly discovery was made near the Leningrad nuclear power plant in 2015. A woman discovered a small body on a riverbank while walking. She christened the dead creature Kisha. The news immediately went viral in the Russian media. Kisha looked like something out of a horror movie. It was tiny and possessed a skull too large for its small size. 
At first glance, there was nothing animalistic about it, but nothing human either. There was speculation that the small creature could be an alien fetus. Russian biologists consider the case less sensational. It's possible that Keisha suffered a mutation caused by the proximity to the nuclear power plant. Most likely, a bird or rodent is behind the carcass. A closer investigation never took place. Nevertheless, it was an exciting story in the region that caused a lot of excitement. Skull found in the mountains Artigea is a small republic in the middle of the Caucasus. The region is difficult to access as it is surrounded by mountains and valleys. In this lonely wasteland, historians discovered an intangible story. Very remote and hidden, a kind of bunker was found. This had been abandoned for decades. A shocking fact came to light. Nazis must have once lived and experimented in this structure during the Second World War. An ancient briefcase still lay among the remains of the broken furniture. It came from the SS and belonged to an expedition dealing with ancestral heritage. The Nazis were also searching for extraterrestrial life and traveled to Asia to do so. The biggest shock was the discovery of two skulls that did not look human. They had large eye sockets but no mouths. Immediately, it was rumored whether the Nazis had succeeded in finding extraterrestrial beings. Scientists in Moscow doubt this assumption. The skulls might simply have deformed over the years, leaving no mouths visible. To this day, many legends surround the Nazi experiments in the Caucasus. What if what has been sold to us for years as pure science fiction is actually real? Does the US government actually have evidence of extraterrestrial life and is keeping it from us? Why is a former military man now breaking the silence and challenging Congress? It's all coming to light now. David Grush was once a very senior military man at the US Pentagon. Among other things, his job was to clear up thousands of unexplained cases of UFO and alien sightings. Grush did his job conscientiously and well. But then he came across something monstrous. In the course of his detection work, he discovered that he had been lied to by his own superiors. For years, Grush had been busy clearing up sightings of so-called unidentifiable flying objects, and his job was more or less to explain most of them in a natural way. But then the officer noticed that Pentagon colleagues had apparently recovered crashed spacecraft. So had the Pentagon known all along about the existence of real aliens and played Grush for a fool? The man looked into the matter, talked to colleagues, and some talked. What he learned shocked the man. Several colleagues had spoken off the record about the fact that crashed spacecraft are regularly recovered on secret missions and then taken to a tightly sealed off location. There, Pentagon experts study the flying saucers, and hundreds of scientists and technicians are said to be busy recreating the technologies. Exactly therefore, the government conceals the existence of the extraterrestrials also. It wants to use their technologies to be able to build spaceships as the first and to be superior to all other nations. Allegedly, a predominantly military use of the technologies is planned, which are to bring the USA finally the military and political world power. Before Congress, Grush was defamed by his superior and portrayed as a disappointment. However, Grush stuck to his descriptions and also reported about biological remains of the aliens. He had not seen these himself, but colleagues who did not want to comment publicly had confirmed the existence of dead aliens. Grush's statements were made under oath so the man is serious. He wants to clear up with the cover-up and the lies of the Pentagon to the topic aliens on Earth, and we may be curious when finally the truth comes to light. We will show you more cases that prove that Grush is telling the truth. Uparts, out-of-place artifacts. Out-of-place artifacts, or uparts, are not direct sightings of extraterrestrials, but testimonies that prove that there are things on this Earth that are not commonly known. The objects are found in places where they do not fit the time or era. For example, an AK-47 rifle was found in an environment during archaeological excavations. The 500-year-old rifle was 60 meters deep underground. AK-47 rifles, however, were invented only in 1947. In 1991, small coil-shaped artifacts turned up in Russia. 
They were several meters deep underground and no one can explain what these parts are. They appear very complex and sophisticated. Overall, they resemble modern technological components. Geological dating showed that these objects are between 20,000 and 300,000 years old. The objects are also made of a material that resembles present-day components manufactured with nanotechnology. The Antikythera mechanism is a complex work of gears that is more than 2,000 years old and was not invented until the onset of industrialization. Experts found that this artifact had been a complex calendar that incorporated star movements and was technologically far ahead of its time. Moreover, no other artifact even remotely similar to it has ever been found on this Earth. Let's move on to a real alien sighting that couldn't be more compelling. Green aliens in Las Vegas. In May 2023, a family called police in a panic to report that a UFO had landed in their Las Vegas backyard. The caller described a creature over six feet tall next to the UFO and said another was sitting inside. He stressed that they were 100% not human. Later, the man also told the CBS news station that the green alien had looked directly at him. Before the police arrived, the alien got back into his spaceship and the UFO flew away. Exactly that evening, a police officer filmed a green flying object spotted in the sky over Nevada. CBS News reported that the police investigated for several weeks after the incident, but without any concrete results. The case was closed because no one can arrest an alien that officially doesn't exist, and for what, anyway? Arrest for emergency landing in a family's garden? This case proves that people usually react in panic to sightings of aliens. It is often claimed that their existence is hidden for exactly this reason. People should not be unnecessarily worried. If politics would deal openly with the information, people could surely slowly get used to the idea that there are extraterrestrials and that they apparently frequent our planet quite naturally. Between 2004 and 2021, the military has recorded a total of 144 other encounters where people have seen aliens like the two green giants from the Las Vegas Garden. Most of the time, the aliens behave shyly and disappear as soon as humans see them. Pilots see UFOs all the time. Sightings of strange flying objects are commonplace among pilots. Pilots of simple passenger and transport aircraft as well as pilots of fighter jets and other military aircraft regularly report sightings of strange flying objects. Most of these sightings fall under the radar. The pilots file a report, it is forwarded, and then the information peters out. There are no investigations, no public statements. Among US Army aviators, resistance to this approach is slowly building. Duty conscious soldiers cannot understand why the Army does nothing when a series of flying objects are sighted in the airspace above the USA and the whole world. After all, Objects like these can pose a danger to the Earth and to people that is difficult to calculate, unless, of course, those responsible have long known what is going on. The Ryan Graves Case Latiel Ryan Graves, along with David Grush, testified under oath before Congress. What he had seen was a definitely not man-made flying object. Latiel Graves was an F-18 Foxtrot pilot stationed with the Navy in Virginia Beach in 2014. During one flight, he detected strange objects on radar. The signal was so strange he thought it was a bug, but it wasn't. Finally, the object became visible. It appeared to be a dark gray cube in a clear sphere. It was about two to five meters in diameter and came very close to the aircraft. Graves reported that her commander quickly called the squadron back to base, but that was it. There was no mention of the incident and no one was allowed to report such sightings. According to Graves, these sightings became more frequent and some superiors informed pilots of the risks of encountering unknown flying objects during their flights. However, no one was allowed to speak about these events. Even within the army and among soldiers, they were not allowed to be spoken of aloud. These events prompted Graves to found the Americans for Safe Aerospace Organization. The organization serves as a safe place for witnesses to unexplained flying objects and a way for pilots to share their encounters. Most reported encounters are from experienced pilots, and most sightings of UFOs happen in low Earth orbit or at high altitudes of 12 kilometers. If there are so many UFOs around the Earth, it sounds logical that every now and then one of them will crash. 
This, in turn, could prove the testimony of former senior investigator David Grush that the Pentagon was well aware of the flying saucers and wanted to recover them and use them for its own purposes. But let's continue to see what evidence history still has in store. The Roswell Crash The 1947 Roswell incident in New Mexico is one of the most famous UFO incidents in the world. According to reports, an unidentified flying object crashed near Roswell, and the U.S. Army initially claimed to have recovered the remains of a flying disc. However, this explanation was revised shortly afterwards, and suddenly it was claimed that it was only the remains of a weather balloon. The statement was supposed to match some pictures that had already become public at that time, showing high officials of the military holding in their hands in amazement a cloth-like silvery material that appeared to be out of this world. It is from this point on that the secrecy is said to have really begun. If David Grush is to be believed, this is probably when the Pentagon began its efforts to get hold of the technologies of this non-human species. The Case of David Fravor David Fravor was a highly decorated Navy commander. Today the man is retired, but in 2004 during his active time, Fravor had reported one of the most remarkable and detailed UFO sightings in recent history. During a routine flight, Fravor encountered an unidentified flying object that he described as a tic-tac. This object moved in a manner that was beyond known flight dynamics, exhibiting maneuvers that could not be explained by the technology of the time. It moved over the waiter like a ping-pong ball. As Fravor tried to approach, the object suddenly accelerated at incredible speeds. Another remarkable detail is that another member of his team, who was at a higher altitude, also saw the object. Despite the clarity of his observations and the support of radar and video recordings, Fravor's report was often questioned by officials. After his retirement, Fravor became a spokesman and trailblazer for former soldiers who no longer want to remain silent about what they really saw and experienced. Fravor was the third witness, along with Lieutenant Ryan Graves, at the alien hearing in the U.S. Congress, the case of Gordon Cooper. Another victim of this policy was Gordon Cooper, a renowned astronaut and test pilot. Cooper encountered several UFOs flying in formation over Europe in 1951 during his time as a pilot. These objects exhibited flight maneuvers and speeds far beyond the technological capabilities of the time. Another notable event occurred in 1963 when Cooper noticed a strange, green, glowing object while flying in space for NASA. This object was not only visually perceived by him, but also detected on radar. Despite his high-ranking position and credibility, Cooper encountered opposition and defamation from his superiors and NASA. Cooper remained steadfast, however, and often spoke at conventions about his sightings and how he was 100% sure of what he had seen. Can you imagine that there is life hidden, bono 400 to 1,500 meters deep under thick ice? That's exactly what teams of researchers from around the world have now proven. Antarctica is a strange place explored by dozens of researchers and adventurers. This remote ice hell sometimes turns out to be a fascinating natural spectacle, then a daunting place you'd rather not visit. Life in one kilometer depth. More than a kilometer deep beneath Antarctica's thick ice sheet, a team of researchers from New Zealand found a bizarre world that had been completely sealed off from the rest of the world for thousands of years. With special drills and a camera, the explorers embarked on a journey into a world that no one had ever seen before. Completely without light and in water with temperatures just above freezing, an ecosystem of dozens of amphipods developed. These shrimp-like creatures are among the oldest life forms on Earth. The shrimp are certainly harmless, but researchers aren't sure what will happen one day when the ice melts and this deep world meets ours. There may be bacteria and germs living there in the deep that could change the oceans and our world forever. Coral Reef in the Deep It is possible that Antarctica is home to dozens or hundreds of these bizarre and completely enclosed ecosystems, each evolved uniquely and harbors a special assortment of creatures and plants. A find in the east of Antarctica proves that not only barren colonies of highly specialized creatures occur. There, hundreds of meters deep under the ice, researchers found a world as rich as a tropical coral reef. Dozens of species of corals, sponges, starfish, and small octopuses appeared before the camera. 
This rich world is also an ecosystem in itself, which has developed for thousands of years completely without outside influences. The richness of colors, shapes, and forms of a surreal underground garden prove once again how creative and resilient life is on this earth. This world also evolved without light and in cold water. Discoveries like these completely redefine the standards for living conditions, and we need to consider this when searching for other living things in space. Since the discoveries in Antarctica, researchers have been raising hopes of finding life outside Earth for the first time on distant icy moons under kilometers of thick ice. Bizarre sound from ice holes. Dozens of research teams are piercing Antarctica like Swiss cheese. The researchers' targets are not only unique subterranean worlds, but also the ice itself. In the depths, scientists are finding ice that was formed 800,000 years ago or even earlier. Each layer tells the researchers exciting details about the era, the climate, and some layers even have trapped remnants of plant matter. Such finds allow conclusions to be drawn about when and if Antarctica was a continent completely or partially free of ice. But have you ever wondered what the researchers do with the holes after drilling? They plug them up again. After the drills have laboriously worked their way down into the depths with the help of hot water, taken samples or lowered cameras, the holes are simply filled again with chunks of ice and sealed with snow. In the process, a strange occurrence has developed. Chunks of ice that fall into the holes, which are hundreds of feet deep, make noises that sound like a strange digital musical instrument. It has become fun among researchers to drop variously shaped chunks into the holes and listen to the sound. Secret Nazi Base In the 1930s, the Nazis made several expeditions to Antarctica. What exactly Hitler's expeditions were looking for at the southernmost point on Earth is part of much speculation. Some say it was purely scientific assumptions. Others claim Hitler was looking for legendary peoples and secret civilizations said to reside in the most remote places on Earth. The German Antarctic Expedition, 1938-39, was led by Captain Alfred Richer. The main goal of this expedition was officially the cartographic exploration of a part of Antarctica that the Nazis called Neuschwabenland. After the war, rumors persisted that Nazis had built an underground base in Antarctica, where quite a few of them retreated after the war. Sightings of mysterious submarines near Antarctica are said to confirm this suspicion. Such a base has never been found. However, it is known that many high-ranking Nazis fled to South America for safety. Tierra del Fuego The southernmost tip of the American continent is comparatively close to Antarctica. Strange Oval A satellite delivered this image, and since then the heads of Antarctic experts and researchers are smoking. What can this be? At first glance, the object looks like a crashed UFO or the remains of a strange structure covered by snow. To examine the strange oval directly is not possible. The formation is located in a part of Antarctica that is not accessible to humans. All the more theories are spinning around this find, because still rumors persist that in Antarctica there are secret civilizations and bases of extraterrestrials. In 2022, researchers published a study according to which the 120-meter-wide formation could have been formed naturally. Catabatic winds can cause temperature differences around very high mountains to form faults that resemble the oval. What do you think? Do you believe in stories of mysterious civilizations in Antarctica? Organism 46b This story shook the internet. In the icy land of Antarctica, a group of Russian scientists experienced pure horror at Lake Vostok. Lake Vostok is a vast underground body of water covered in thick ice. After drilling through the thick ice, the Russian explorers reached a freshwater reservoir of the lake hidden underneath. Curious, they dove down and soon regretted their decision. In the depths, they encountered a monstrous octopus with 14 terrifying tentacles. This creature was so brutal that it immediately attacked the explorers, killing some of them. The explorers, who escaped with their lives, immediately ascended. They later stated that the squid was able to secrete a toxin into the water that paralyzed its prey. This frightening story has sparked debate and analysis. Supposedly, scientists knew of large squid species in the Antarctic Ocean, 
But others threw up their hands. This story can only be a hoax, because squid live in salt water, and there is no evidence whatsoever of the existence of the creature referred to in the story as Organism 46B. Singing Ice Ice is literally on every corner in Antarctica, but singing ice is special even in this place. Researchers discovered the singing of the Ross Ice Shelf by accident while taking seismic measurements. The measurements are used to document the annual retreat of the ice. The fine vibrations that the shelf constantly emits were converted into audible sound using sonography. The result was a mostly melancholic and sad-sounding symphony. It is interesting in this context that the ice can change its mood. If the weather changes, the melody also changes. Meanwhile, researchers can tell from the changes in the ice's song how the shelf will move and what changes are imminent. The Lost Empire of Atlantis The Greek philosopher Plato told of a city so beautiful and so rich that it could not be compared with any other in this world. Noble beings of high learning lived there, agriculture flourished, and the kings were among the noblest of this world. Every child today knows the name Atlantis, but no one knows whether this empire was pure fiction or real. Supposedly, Atlantis perished after its inhabitants fell away from their nobility and began to move aggressively into the world. But where is Atlantis today, if the story is really true? According to mythology, the city sank into the depths of the ocean. Recent scientific evidence suggests that Atlantis was a peninsula at the southern tip of Africa. Meanwhile, it is believed that the southern tip of Africa may also have meant Antarctica. From Cape Agulhas to the northernmost tip of Antarctica is about 3,800 to 4,000 kilometers. Ancient Egg The fact is that Antarctica used to be a green land with animals and rich nature. An ancient egg now reveals more about Antarctica's prehistoric past. The fossilized egg was discovered on Seymour Island in Antarctica and provides a fascinating glimpse into the ancient world. This egg is comparable in size to an American football, and it is an impressive 66 million years old. It is the first egg ever found in Antarctica and the second largest ever discovered. Larger eggs were laid only by the long-extinct elephant bird of Madagascar. Scientific analysis showed that this fossilized egg once belonged to a giant sea lizard or snake creature that existed along with the dinosaurs. The egg is currently in the National Museum of Natural History in Chile. Rare Whales Considered one of the last paradises for whales, some eight species of whales reside permanently or temporarily in the cold waters surrounding Antarctica. Thickly padded with layers of fat, the giant marine mammals brave the freezing temperatures. Humpback whales shuttle seasonally between Antarctic waters and warmer areas closer to the equator. Minke whales prefer Antarctica as their summer home, and even the rare blue whales can still be found here. The blue whale is the largest animal that has ever lived on Earth. Due to the consequences of whaling, these animals have become severely depleted and shy. Researchers suspect that there are only a few hundred of them left. Ice fish colony. Those who can adapt have it really good in Antarctica. Far from humans, the noise of shipping and the pollution of the waters, life is flourishing. This is also proven by these ice fish, which form the largest known fish colony on Earth. Millions of them have gathered on the seabed off the coast of Antarctica. Each pair has a nest on the bottom and raises young fish there. The colony first caught our eye on radar images, and today we know that it covers several thousand square kilometers. Mushrooms in Antarctica. Mushrooms don't like cold. As if that's what researchers thought until now, but Antarctica teaches scientists something completely new again. The first Antarctic mushrooms are not only special, because mushrooms do not normally exist here. They also have a habit that makes them unique. These mushrooms eat petroleum. They were discovered in a hut that once served as a shelter for the explorer Ernest Shackleton. For decades there are rumors, 
about secret alien bases on the backside of the moon. But what is there to the claims in our alleged witnesses and photos of buildings and relics of alien mining on the moon really real? We investigate the matter and are happy if you join us right now in this clarification of the mysterious circumstances around the moon. The dark side of the moon is not dark at all, on the contrary. The back side of the moon experiences the same play on brightness and darkness as the front side. The back side is called dark because it can never be seen from Earth and was unknown and in the dark for many generations of people. The moon orbits the sun bound to the orbit of the Earth. Since the moon and the Earth rotate around their own axis at approximately the same speed, an exciting effect occurs. The moon and the Earth always show exactly the same side to each other. If you look at the moon, you can distinguish dark and bright areas, and these patterns are always the same. The front side changes depending on the irradiation angle of the sun, and then the moon is sometimes completely dark, as a crescent, half, or fully illuminated. The back side experiences a similar play of light and shadow, so it is neither completely dark nor bright. People only know what the far side of the moon looks like since it was visited by the first probes. Strictly speaking, it was the Soviet mission Luna 3 that sent the first images of the far side of the moon back to Earth on October 7, 1959. Already in ancient times, the far side of the moon was associated with mysterious, unknown, and dark forces, an effect that has lasted until today. Today, however, people do not suspect evil spirits or demons on the back of the moon, but extraterrestrials. Many sources report about an extraterrestrial civilization, which should have lived once on the moon or have operated mining there. Allegedly, these aliens still operate a space base there and watch from the back of the moon suspiciously the doings of humans and our space projects. That the aliens are on the back of the Earth satellite is obvious, because we cannot see their activities there. There are nevertheless some hints or even tangible proofs for the existence of these beings. 1. The Moon Missions in 1969, three men flew to the moon, and two of them went to the surface in a lunar capsule, while the third one did some laps around the moon, lonely and alone in the base module. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were the first men on the moon. The fact that they made a moonwalk, placed a flag of the USA in the moon dust, and carried out some scientific investigations belongs to the known part of the mission. Allegedly, however, NASA is concealing something from us about this moon flight, so Aldrin and Armstrong are supposed to have sighted already with their landing on the moon some spaceships, which observed the intention of the two men from safe distance. Of course, this was never part of the public screening of the moon landing, and the landing was, as always claimed, also not broadcast live, but slightly delayed in order to cut out events from the pictures, of which the public should not notice anything. Thus, the sequence in which Armstrong steered the camera to the edge of the ocean of tranquility on the moon to film the spacecraft was allegedly also deleted. The radio message, Sir, these babies are big, very big in fact. They have placed themselves on the rim of the crater and are watching us, was never made public. One person who claims to have heard the announcement live at NASA at the time is Otto Bender. The former communications technician at NASA said years after the moon landing that he happened to be in the control center when the radio message was received. Other NASA employees later testified that pieces had been removed from the other Apollo missions as well. According to these witnesses, the sighting of extraterrestrials on the moon had been quite normal, and at NASA they call the apparitions Santa Claus. After the shocking details first came to light in the 1970s and 1980s, Incidents of former NASA employees claiming the outrageous occurred again in the 1990s. Donna Hare once worked for a NASA subcontractor, and her job was to remove anomalies from image and film recordings. To be precise, this meant that Donna Hare retouched spaceships out of pictures. If one is to believe this witness, this practice is everyday life at NASA, and every day thousands of pictures of probe missions from Mars, the Moon, or also film material from the ISS are reworked in such a way that all traces of UFOs and extraterrestrial life forms have disappeared. Nevertheless, even the image processing experts of NASA do not succeed in everything, because again and again, images leak out that show strange phenomena. 2. Strange Monuments On the moon, 
Two formations called the Shard and the Castle in particular have made it to some notoriety. The Shard is a conspicuous structure on the lunar surface, made famous by photographs taken by NASA's Lunar Orbiter Program in the 1960s. It is a monolithic structure estimated to rise more than three kilometers above the lunar landscape. The exact nature and origin of the Shard are the subject of speculation and debate. Some believe it is a natural geological phenomenon, possibly the result of tectonic activity or a meteorite impact. Others speculate that it may be artificial, an indication of an advanced extraterrestrial civilization. While most scientists favor natural formation, the Shard remains the center of intense speculation surrounding extraterrestrial activity on the moon to this day. The castle is another mysterious structure visible in some images taken by NASA's Lunar Orbiter program in the 1960s. The castle appears to hover above the lunar surface and has a distinctive shape that looks like a building. The exact nature and origin of the castle have also been the subject of speculation and debate since the images became known. Again, most scientists declare that it is a natural geological phenomenon, while ufologists and alien enthusiasts in particular see in this formation a sign of former extraterrestrial activity. Quite recent is the discovery of a cube-like object photographed by a Chinese rover on the far side of the moon. The image was taken by U-22 on December 3, 2021, and shows a large cubic object on the horizon, about 80 meters from its position. After two lunar days, U-22 had reached the object and inspected it from all sides. In this case, the object turned out to be an ordinary boulder, highlighted in a particular way by light and shadow. Critics also suspect something similar with the formation Splinter and Castle, but we won't know exactly until rovers or humans have been on site. Before the end of this decade, NASA's Artemis mission is expected to put humans on the moon again for the first time. There are even plans for a permanently inhabited lunar base. Then, finally, humans on the ground are to reveal all the secrets of the moon. Third UFO sighting on the moon. In 1971, U.S. astronaut James Irwin, in his role as pilot of the Apollo 15 lunar landing module, filmed an object clearly hovering over the lunar surface that looked like a flying saucer. The dome shape and shadow under the spacecraft are clearly visible. There are also many images of diffuse, cigar-shaped spacecraft hovering over the lunar surface with the shadow cast by the objects serving as evidence of authenticity as well as the object's locomotion. After such photographs and reports by astronauts became public, NASA often attempted to rationalize or explain the phenomena. In many cases, the observations were explained as optical illusions, reflections, camera anomalies, or natural geological phenomena. NASA's official stance on UFOs and extraterrestrial claims is skeptical, and it is consistently stressed that there is no conclusive evidence of extraterrestrial life or advanced technologies on the moon or in other parts of space. Supporters of NASA say the release of James Irwin's film footage suggests the agency has nothing to hide. But anyone who sees the flying saucer and is then expected to believe in a natural phenomenon is bound to feel a bit led by the nose. Or what do you think? 4. Mining Activities on the Moon These tracks were originally attributed to the movement of lunar sailstones. Supposedly, these types of rocks moved over long distances, as ice once present on the moon melted beneath them. One gap in these explanations has always been that tracks like these are actually formed only when there is wind and great gravity. But on the moon, no single breeze blows, and masses are much lighter on the Earth's satellite than on the Earth. In the present time, these traces inside a crater were interpreted as indications of extraterrestrial mining. Now you can ask yourself, what aliens should mine on the moon if there is only wasteland and dust there? Well, an interesting answer to this question was found not so long ago. Apparently, there are minerals on the moon that are rich in helium-3, and that's why even Earthlings are now considering mining the rock on a large scale on the moon and bringing it back to Earth. Helium-3 is suitable for nuclear fusion like no other isotope. A space shuttle full of this raw material could supply the entire USA with electricity for a year. So what aliens have mined on the moon, or may still be mining today, could thus be cleared up. 
A researcher has discovered on a rather blurred picture of NASA, even an object that looks like a massive multi-plate mining machine. Allegedly, the image was distorted by NASA to make the object unrecognizable. 5. Lights and glows. For centuries, astronomers and scientists have observed unexplained light phenomena on the lunar surface. This is probably where the tales of the man in the moon turning the lights on and off came from. Scientists call these short-lived bursts of light transient lunar phenomena. The causes of these phenomena are still not fully understood, and again some want to see evidence of alien activity in them, while others say quite normal. Some scientists believe that these lights could be the result of gas emissions or volcanic activity on the moon. Other theories say that they could be caused by the reflection of sunlight from certain minerals or by electrostatic discharges. In fact, there are quite a few of these light phenomena for which there is no natural explanation whatsoever, and we may ask why aliens are so vehemently ruled out as the cause when supposedly no one knows if they exist or not. What do you think now about these proofs? Are they real and credible for you? Or do you think aliens on the moon is pure nonsense?